1989, HBO releases a new television series from Robert Zemeckis called Tales from the Crypt. A send-up to horror pulp comics, it was seen as an excessive, smutty, over-the-top gore fest of bad taste, obnoxious jokes, and trashy writing. By God, we loved every minute of it. In 1995, Universal releases a cinematic treatment of the TV show, Demon Knight. While not a critical darling, it did bring in almost double its budget, and over time gained a cult following. Years later, does it still have the same blood-dripping grip with a bad pun attached as it did when it first came out? Was the Crypt Keeper the voice of Buster Bunny in the last few episodes of Tiny Toons? Bet you didn't know that one, did ya? Watch the Christmas special, you'll totally notice a difference. I'm Nostalgia Stack, and welcome to Nostalgia Ween. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember it so you don't have to. Sometimes you just need a dead guy to crack Happy Meal jokes in order to feel good. Originally written as its own standalone movie, the script for Demon Knight caught the eye of Tales from the Crypt producers who figured it'd be a perfect segue into a bigger cinematic story. Where most Tales from the Crypt episodes are what the makers often called comeuppance stories, Demon Knight was more of a traditional survival story told in arguably an untraditional way. It delighted the hell out of me as a kid just as much as it does now and we're gonna see what made it stand out. Let's see if this film still matches the gory trashiness of the show! Boy, do I need to fire my editor. The hell am I supposed to do with that? This is Tales from the Crypt presents Demon Knight. Ah, uh, you know how some kids had Sesame Street as their childhood TV song? We truly disturbed kids had this. You know who you are and I love you all. Seriously, the price of admission was more than worth it just to see this opening on the big screen. It was just amazing to see it that large and with such incredible sound. Seriously, you can end this intro with... Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> All right! That's it for me! Be good, everybody! So remember that one time you called a sex hotline? That woman you talked to is an actress now. You should have seen the look on Carl's face when I buried that axe in his chest. It makes me realize the empty connection I have with my father. I mean how hot I am. Death is but a tiny hurdle in horror films, though, as the man she murdered comes back for revenge, but it looks like this is all a film set directed by the Crypt Keeper, voiced again by John Cassier. I kind of love how even though the actress is clearly acting hokey, he chooses to pick on the guy playing the monster. It makes sense, that would be the most important to him. You call that acting? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do call it acting. You're no Gory Cooper. You ain't even a Robert Dedford. I don't need this, I'm John Larroquette. I was a Klingon in Star Trek III! It's also ironic that while he chews this guy out for not being very convincing, this also isn't the most convincing effect. You can even see the reflection of the green screen on his collar. Good luck avoiding that future screenings! How the hell did they dig this guy up? I'm off to see if any more night court actors died. As usual, the Crypt Keeper introduces the symphony of scares we're about to endure. Fasten your drool cups and hold on to your vomit bags. We're going to the movies! And sinking film careers while we're at it! The story starts as a car chase ensues between a man named Breaker, played by William Sadler, and a man only known as The Collector, played by the best goddamn Billy Zane performance a goddamn Billy Zane performance could goddamn Billy Zane. Move over back to the future henchman number four. Breaker blows up the car, but as the Black Knight put it, I've had worse. Did you see him? The guy I was chasing? Airbags, gotta love him. Did you see him? The film is great at not letting us know who the real good guy or bad guy is at first. Especially considering scenes like this don't get creepier with the passage of time. Hey kid, you want a quarter? How about a shiny new quarter? You want one? Dad, there's a guy outside stealing your car! Call the police and possibly Chris Hansen! Breaker befriends every 80s and 90s cult film mascot, Dick Miller, who takes him to a hotel. That even from Dust Till Dawn cast members would be like, fuck that shit. 
The stars literally align on Breaker's hand, as again, a decent mystery is set up here as to what's going on. The hotel owner asks her daughter Geraldine, played by Janet Pickett Smith, to show Breaker his room while a fired mailman, played by Charles Flesher, looks on as a prostitute he's in love with, sleeps with a sleazy guy named Roach, played by Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, the cast list for this movie is short but simple. So the writing in the first third of this movie is very, well, Tales from the Cryptish. Hey, maybe I should give him a freebie. Hmm, just what he needs. Someone else screwing him. Are my sheets done yet? I couldn't get all those stains out. Damn guacamole. Get that pussy off the table. I meant the cat. But the actors are so much fun to watch, they hold your attention until the plot gets rolling. And it certainly does that when the collector enters the hotel. Oh, <laughs> drop the guns or I'll kill her. I said drop your goddamn gun! We both know she has a prosperous career of marrying Will Smith. He does drop the knife as the cops try to find an artifact that the collector says is his. What's he got to do with this? I'm, I work for a, a collection agency. Remember the end of Hereditary? That's us. They try to see if he hid it in the hotel when they come across... Come on. Oh. 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 Well, they did say this movie jump-starred his career. I'll play it. They finally find the artifact, but the collector notices liquid inside and asks someone to pour it out. He's not what he says he is, Willie! Willie! Please <laughs> just, just pop that lid. So, yeah, while this is pretty silly, it does still keep your interest as to what's going on. And part of the comedy comes from you don't know who to trust in this scenario. Look what he's done. He's gone yes. and put something awful inside there. W would you mind dumping that out before you place it inside? I don't think Ben Affleck as the Cheshire Cat could have a more smug smile than that. Oh, I'll take that, Willie. Just quoting what was said to Hayden Church a moment ago. The cops find out the collector's car was stolen and they arrest him as well. Leading to... Nope, you can't show that on YouTube unless you want to be demonetized. <laughs> God damn it! <sighs> All right, um... Remember the headless ancestor in Mulan? You know, that G-rated movie? Well, just imagine a Billy Zane-shaped fist where his face should be. Needless to say, I'm still waiting for that alternate cut of Titanic that ends the same way. And I'll just say it, from here on out, this is Billy Zane's movie. He comes alive like he put on Jim Carrey's The Mask, except there aren't any CG cartoon effects, and seemingly nobody told him that, yet he's still acting like there are. Fucking hold up, hold up, well then there, motherfuckers! What the hell is there to think about? Hello? Just looking at you, Uncle Willie. Come on out, everybody! It's time to play! Make you feel good, do it! Live your life like Billy Zane in Demon Knight. There's too much fun in the world not to be utilized. He spills green blood on the ground, which gives birth to demons rising from the sand. But Breaker pours some of the blood from the key into the doorway, creating a demon force field. Yeah, how is there not a video game created from this? Ah! Oh my god, that was so cool! Hey mister, that was cool. Ah! I'm sorry. Don't be, he's only been alive for two minutes and already he's been punched by a prostitute. It took me 35 years to get that merit badge. They discover they have to hit the ice to kill them, but it shoots out a beam, hurting the mailman. Now I of course wore a bunny suit to get in character for Roger Rabbit, so I insist on sitting in a prostitute's arms for hours for this performance. Give me the key, Breaker, for crying out loud. Breaker closes off the rest of the doorways as he explains what they're up against. What the hell are those things? Demons or something? Worse. Demons. Oh, that's sweet. That's just fucking sweet. He reacted to demons the same way you'd react to squirrels in an attic. Demons. Oh, that's sweet. That's just fucking sweet. Gotta get peanut butter, a trap. Can we electrocute him to death? Because I have the cables for that. Breaker has a flashback to him. <laughs> yeah, th this all makes great. <laughs> Let's see if this has the same subtle restraint passion that the Christ had. <laughs> Somehow this is more subtle. He gets snapped back to reality as the prostitute is tempted by the collector who uses illusions and mind games to trick her into letting him turn her into a demon. All you have to do is let me in. Now this is a great effect when you realize there was no CG used for it. It was done on set. But when you realize the only way that can be done is through an air blowing device, it does kind of mess with the soothing mood a bit. All you have to do is let me in. I was already getting a Treehouse of Horror vibe, why stop now? The mailman enters the room unaware that the collector has possessed her and she rips him apart, as well as the hotel owners are. Breaker kills her though as they find a secret passage underground that everyone wants to use except Breaker. 
I say we give those goddamn demons what they want. I'm not gonna give you the key. You're gonna have to take it. And then I'm gonna have to kill you, right? Joke's on you. Spider-Man 3 will do that for me. They decide to give it a shot as they come across the boy from earlier and his demon parents. Wait, his parents weren't demons. <laughs> Even though they fight the demons off, things get complicated because now there's seven people. Yeah, like I said, it gets complicated. I mean, there are only five of you. They need seven. It's like tumblers in a lock. Everything has to line up. Seven stars, seven people. It has to be the seventh hotel to have seven doors while seven brides for seven brothers plays on seven TVs. It's in the scripture! He reveals that the demons are the darkness before God said, let there be light. And only a key passed down to a select chosen few carrying the blood of Christ can stop them. The blood in inside is that some of it, yeah. The rest is wild turkey. That with the blood of Christ mixes surprisingly well. Hey folks, we're gonna be at Grand Rapids Comic Con in Grand Rapids, Michigan, November 8th to the 10th. We were there last year, we had a fantastic time, and we can't wait to return. We'll see you guys there. So Rook steals the key as the Collector tries to persuade Geraldine to be possessed. You will give me what I want. That's just the way it is. And the sooner you figure that out, the better. Haven't you realized nobody can resist my eyelashes? I like that when she walks out, you're not sure if she gave in to him or not. Again, keeping the suspense a little higher. But that doesn't stop the Collector appealing to his willy by appealing to his willy. Shove this one down, Uncle Willy! We can't stop here! This is demon country! There you go. Have enough. Prettiest man I ever saw. <laughs> Well, that's going up, I mean on. They discover that the postman was going to get revenge on the post office the way most postmen in the 90s got revenge on the post office. He was planning to take out the post office for Cadelia. And I thought he was one of the nice, creepy-ass, crazy stalkers. Willie attacks Breaker, though, while at the same time, the collector offers the owner a hand. Is that a yes? No. That's me giving you the finger, asshole. Have I mentioned I love this movie yet? Willie is defeated as Roach cuts a deal with the collector. He'll give them the key if he lets them go. But first, he has to get rid of the blood blocking their entry. The blood too. You notice the best effects in this movie are stupidly simple? I love imagining Zane just waiting to hear action with a folded up sponge shoved in his mouth the entire time. And action! Blah, thank God! But with good editing, it's just another fun effect that adds a lot of, for lack of a better word, zaniness. <laughs> You know this hell on earth business? Big fucking deal. I got hemorrhoids. I am still waiting for a t-shirt of that. He of course kills off Roach, but the rest of them fight back getting the key. I'm gonna cover the rear! Get your asses up there! Go! For years I've always been confused for that pudgy guy from them Ernest movies! But now I'll be confused as that nobody from Ghost Dog- Wait, that was me too?! Who the hell am I again?! He and the owner uses the postman's grenades to sacrifice themselves to save the others. I feel like that many grenades would probably result in... But whatevs. As nevertheless, they're killed in a blaze of violence. Hey, can you keep it down? Comics. So the collector tries to persuade Danny, but this is done in the background while Geraldine and Breaker talk. And this is a shame because I always wondered what he said to win him over. I can tell you how to see Samus naked in Super Metroid. Well, not naked, but pixelated bathing suit. At your age, that's still something. That's still something. Breaker realizes, though, with Geraldine being the last one left, she must be the chosen one to take the key. Seeing how Danny turned into a demon. That reminds me, Danny turned into a demon. <laughs> Out of all the demons, Danny is easily the best looking one, but it's a shame because he's not on screen that long. He attacks Breaker and then is very quickly taken out. As Breaker dies, he passes on all the power and information of all the people who have been the protector of the key in the past. What? <laughs> should be interesting. I've never seen Death play himself before. Do your research on that one. That joke works on so many levels. I'm very proud of it. 
The Collector makes his way to Geraldine, but she covers herself in the blood so he can't touch her. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> he manages to wash the blood off her, but she puts the rest in her mouth. Truth be told, this does kind of drag out the climax as we know exactly what's gonna happen. She's gonna spit it on the Collector, killing him off. Yet they keep postponing it like we don't know that's going to happen. But fuck it, who cares? It gives Billy Zane more of an excuse for mugging. You know, no one's ever brought a demon knight over to the other side before. Not in one piece, anyway. He's kind of like every supernatural fast talker, but with half the budget. Which weirdly makes him even more fun because he has to rely on his charm over effects. But it does get a little weird when he suddenly confesses his love for Geraldine. Yeah, that happens. Geraldine, I... I... You. Jolene, do you think you could ever find it in your heart to possibly me? Hmm, let me check Google Maps. No, no. No, I have no idea where that came from. So yeah, that is random and odd, but that's also kind of why I like watching him, because he is so random and odd. So yeah, if he wants to open his fly to reveal he has human torches splooge, I... I'm really weirded out, yeah, but in this movie, I'm okay with it. I'm gonna take your heart. Like I said, she does spit in his face, revealing his true form and blowing him to smithereens. Geraldine is left to find the next protector of the key as she blocks every entryway she goes through. No, it's okay. I'll wait for the next. I know Bordello of Blood is next. The film ends with the Crypt Keeper going to the premiere of his own movie. But his producers saw it and weren't happy. I think my producers are trying to tell me something. Those actually are the producers, by the way. Zemeckis was too busy trying to figure out how to piss people off with contact. Now that's entertainment! <laughs> I tend to agree with you. What can I say? I love this film. Demon Knight is not any kind of groundbreaking horror cinema, but it is a lot of fun. The story and goofy characters keep you engaged, there's a lot of imagination behind it, and even with a lower budget as horror movies at the time went, it turned out some very creative effects. And don't get me wrong, it can drag in a few places, and it's not the traditional Tales from the Crypt story of assholes getting what's coming to them. But I kind of appreciate that too. Like they knew, it's a movie, and they don't want to just give people one long episode. They want to step up the game a bit. Over the years, its fans have grown, and you can definitely count me in the mix. It's over the top and ridiculous, but surprisingly hooks you in enough waiting for what's gonna happen next. Take a look if you haven't already. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. You fucking hold dunk, hold dunk, well they in there, motherfuckers! Hey, Doug Walker here. Uh, this charity is a really, really cool idea. It's called A Chance in Life. 150 million kids live in the streets. This charity wants to give, in the founder's words, a chance in life. These desperately poor kids live with no supervision and recoiled at adults telling them what to do. This independent nature inspired a visionary approach to youth development, giving the children the responsibility of running their own town. Self-government became the essence of life at these towns, providing the citizens, as the children are called, with the skills, confidence, and creativity to become active participants in their communities and the builders of their own lives. These boys and girls towns started in Italy but shifted from being a community of Italian war orphans to being the home of thousands of young refugees and unaccompanied minors. These young people escaping civil unrest, poverty, and persecution have come to these towns in Rome from over 20 different countries. The towns in Italy have touched the lives of over 30,000 young people. In June of 2018, A Chance in Life inaugurated boys and girls of Bolivia, Colombia, Guatemala, and Peru, where together they serve over a thousand children living in marginalized communities. This is such a cool idea and you can help them create even more mentally and physically healthy children through your donations. Click on the link and see why Charity Navigator has given this organization its highest rating of four stars.